The scene shows a World War II fighter plane that you will texture using the viewport canvas tool. At this time, the plane is an editable poly with no mapping coordinates. To use viewport canvas on an object, the object first needs to be unwrapped. However, the unwrapping process complexity can be kept at a bare minimum. Apply an Unwrap UVW modifier. In the Edit UVs window, switch to Face Mode and select all faces representing the airplane. From the Mapping menu, select Flatten Mapping. Uncheck Rotate Clusters. This isn't absolutely necessary, but it ensures clusters are laid out in a horizontal vertical configuration. Uncheck Fill Holes to ensure you don't get any clusters within clusters areas. By clicking on OK, 3ds Max unwraps the UVs the best way it can, based on the angle threshold specified, in this case the default 45 degrees. Notice also how unwrapping packs all the clusters within the boundaries of the working area. This is significant as you don't want any clusters outside of these boundaries. Adding to that note that real-world textures and real-world mapping are not recommended when using viewport canvas. Looking at the current results, unwrapping work doesn't usually stop here. In a typical production workflow, you'd need to clean up the UVs quite a bit more if you are paving the way for work in a paint application. All the smaller bits and pieces would typically need to be stitched to other clusters and the cleanup time can be substantial. With Viewport Canvas, you can already stop working on your UVs even at this early stage and start painting away in the viewport. Notice the UV coordinates display in the viewport. You can get rid of that by collapsing the model to an editable poly. The UV coordinates will be preserved. You also need to ensure that the model has a material applied to it. In this case, a standard material with default settings has already been applied to the model. From the Tools menu, choose Viewport Canvas. A floating dialog appears. Always ensure the model is selected, otherwise you get a warning if you try using a Viewport Canvas tool. Click the Paint tool and choose the Diffuse Color as a channel to paint on. A dialog appears. Since you have not specified a bitmap in the applied material, you will use this dialog to create a base bitmap. You will then use Viewport Canvas tools to edit the bitmap in the viewport. Specify a preset size of 1024. This represents a medium to high quality settings, a 1024 by 1024 pixel image. Change the color to a pale olive green. This represents the base color for the newly created bitmap. Save the file to a local folder and give it a name, for example p47.tiff, which was the number given to the Thunderbolt World War II fighter plane. Click OK to exit the dialog. Now the plane has a green color applied to it. Next, you add the camouflage pattern. With Viewport Canvas, it is important to make good use of layers. Avoid painting on the base, background layer, as you cannot delete it or make edits to it. Create a new layer. Double-click its label and rename it Camo. You'll use it for the camouflage pattern. Choose a darker green color and bring your cursor onto the model's surface. You can see the effect of the brush before applying it. Set the hardness value to 90%. Camouflage patterns are usually well defined, not blurred. The brush size can also be changed, but remember that it is screen dependent. This means that the brush can get bigger or smaller as you zoom in or out of the scene. Start laying down a few brush strokes on the wings and the horizontal stabilizers. Notice as you paint that the strokes affect the top and the bottom of the wings. This is because the brush is spherical, not circular. In this case, the diameter value of the brush is larger than the distance that separates the top and bottom faces of the wings. When you're done with the wings, try painting on the fuselage. Notice how easy it is to match the seams between the left and right sides. Notice also that since the brush size is smaller than the width of the fuselage, you're only painting one side at a time. Finish off the work by painting the tail of the plane. 
Create a new layer and name it Nose. Switch to a yellow color and paint the nose of the airplane. If you make a mistake, hold the Shift key and paint over the areas you want to erase. This is faster than switching to the eraser tool. Switch to a brown color to paint the air intake. Instead of a paintbrush, try the effect of a burn brush. 